picked this up at Nordstrom during the Nord. I picked the up. Hey guys, it's Katie. Today I'm here to bring you my August favorites. I have a lot of favorites this month, so let's not waste any time and let's just get right to it. The first thing is something that I'm kind of sorry to do this to you because it's kind of pricey for what it is. But I think that you all need this. This is the Donna Karen Cashmere Mist deodorant. I picked this up at Nordstrom during the anniversary sale. And this is a deodorant that I had heard lots of people talk about on YouTube. Also, my best friend Sam uses this deodorant and I was kind of like, okay, what's the hype all about? Donna Karen Cashmere Mist is a famous perfume or like a well-known perfume. And you might think it sounds strange to have perfumed armpits, but let me tell you, it is such a creamy, soft scent that it's not like having perfume on your underarms at all. In fact, this stuff, okay, this might be TMI, but one day I was at work and I realized that I forgot to put deodorant on. Backtrack, I had been using this every single day for a few weeks. And this one day, I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot to put deodorant on. I had a little mini one in my purse of a different kind, and I was like, remember to put that on, remember to put that on, remember to put that on. Well, guess what? I never remembered to put it on. But at the end of the day, I smelled my underarms, and no lie, they smelled good. Like, not bad, but like almost good. Like, there was almost residual. I don't know what this does. Like, I had showered, there, there was none of this on me but it just makes me feel like I smell so good. Like I said, it's a creamy, powdery kind of a scent. It's an antiperspirant, so it helps keep your like sweating at bay, and more importantly, it just smells amazing. I don't know what else to say about it, it's just, you just have to try it, and then you'll see. I love the packaging, it's kind of like sleek and pretty, and I've always used men's deodorant, so it's kind of nice to be treating myself to kind of a girly, fun deodorant product. My next beauty favorite is actually what I'm wearing on my lips today. It is by Bare Minerals. It's their new Gen Nudes collection, and this is one of the liquid lipsticks. This is in the shade Swag. I got mine as a 100 point perk at Sephora, but I had played with this formula in the store even before I saw it, and I was like, okay, I'm super into these. They came out with a collection of a bunch of different nude colors. I'm gonna swatch this for you. So they're all a bunch of different really pretty nudes. I love this color Swag. It's like a really light neutral pink, and it goes with any makeup look, any outfit. One thing I love about this is the formula. It does not dry down too much. Like if you're not into liquid lipsticks or you're nervous to get into liquid lipsticks, I would highly recommend these because they almost have like the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream or what else? I'm trying to think of another product that's similar. But they don't fully, fully, oh, like the ColourPop Satin finish of the liquid lipsticks. They don't fully dry, so with that being said, they might not be as long lasting as a really drying one, but I think that's kind of a perk. It always is gonna feel comfortable on the lips. It's a bit sheer in the formula. I don't know how that goes for other colors in the line. This one's a bit sheer, like I find myself kind of building it up or reapplying throughout the day, but it didn't bug me at all. I liked having something that was long lasting yet could come off a little easy if you needed it to. Another thing I'm obsessed with, shocking, the scent of it. But really, Bare Minerals products smell amazing. And this one, you guys, I can't describe what this smells like. It's one of those things where it flashes me back to a memory and I'm like, what is that? I think it's cookies and cream or something. I don't know, if anybody has this and has smelled it, tell me what you think it smells like, please because I think it's Oreos or cookies and cream, but it smells so amazing, and I definitely wanna pick a full-size one up. I'm interested in getting the shade Frenemy, but you should definitely check these out. My next favorite is what I have on my nails. It's a nail polish, duh. It is by Formula X, and it's in the color Impeccable. I used to work at Disney, for anybody who doesn't know, and at Disney, you have to follow the Disney look guidelines, which means neutral colors, like I would not be able to wear this eyeshadow, I would be able to wear this lipstick and this nail polish, but you have to have neutral colors, you have to be minimal with your jewelry, blah, blah, blah. So ever since I have not worked for Disney, I am kind of rebellious in the sense that I love being able to wear black and blue and purple and green, and so I don't wear very many nude nail polishes, even though I think they're really pretty. I think just mentally, I affiliate that with like, girl, you're not tied down anymore. Like, wear whatever you want. You don't have to wear those nude shades. But when I pulled this back out, this really is one of my favorite favorite nail polish shades. It is so feminine and so pretty. It's like a 
mauve pink. This would actually be a gorgeous lip color and it's kind of similar to the lip color I have on. It is actually listed as one of the best sellers by Formula X. So I really, really encourage this. If you work for Disney, this should be Disney look. I don't know, unless I'm wrong and it's not, but like I wore it and nobody ever got me in trouble. And I just think it's so feminine, it's so pretty. The other benefit to wearing a light colored nail polish is that when it chips, like mine have a little bit, you can't really tell as easily, so you can go a few extra days without having to touch that up. My next beauty favorite is something kind of random because I don't even have it, so I don't know if this is me cheating, but I just have to give it a shout out. It's by Kiehl's and it's the Creamy Avocado Eye Treatment. This is something that I had heard lots of people talk about. It's like one of their favorite eye creams. It's a best-selling eye cream, yada, yada, yada. Well, I got a sample of it and I used it for about, I think, a week or two, maybe a week and a half is how long it lasted me. It was a strange formula, but I did quite enjoy it. The reason that I am making a point to mention it is because I don't know why or if this was just a coincidence, but I had this really annoying little like bump that had formed by my right eye and I had probably had it for like six months or so. It was just this little like white little bump, like it was just like on my skin. It didn't really like stand out that much. I, I don't, I didn't know what it was. I was like, uh, well, like literally what is it? It wasn't like a, like a white head or anything. It was right by my eye and whatever. So I used this creamy avocado eye treatment and after like the first night I used it, I remember feeling my eye because I used to always feel that bump because it would just bother me. So I would always like gravitate towards it and I felt it and it almost felt like it was like dried up and I was like, wait, why? This is weird. And then like two days later or so, I touched it again and it was like, like almost gone. Like it had kind of just disappeared and I was like, what in the world is happening? So I kept using it and long story short, that bump is gone. It was just like this little white, little like, I don't know how to describe it. Now I'm probably sounding super strange, but I attribute the fact that it went away to the Kiehl's Creamy Avocado Eye Treatment. So it's something that I am very interested in picking up in the full size and yeah, it seemed to work a miracle on me, so maybe it could work for you. The next two things, this is one thing that I hauled in my recent beauty haul. Sorry if there are extra hairs in this. This is the wet brush. When I posted this in my haul, I had a bunch of people comment and tell me, they're like, oh, you're gonna love that wet brush. Like I had heard of this for a long time. This is just the mini one. Um, they have it in a bigger size, but this basically, as the name implies, is something that you can use when your hair is wet. Ladies know that brushing your hair when it's wet can be like, it can be tangly. I usually go in with a wide tooth comb because you don't want to just like damage your hair, but I have a ton of hair and it's just a huge pain. Well, this is like, say no more. You can just brush directly from root to end without having to like start down here because of the way that the bristles are. I will say that it doesn't like get all the way through like a deep, um, comb is like going through all of your hair strands, but it definitely is a great way to brush your hair and to make sure everything's managed once you get out of the shower. It feels so comfortable like going through your hair. It just like glides right through. You don't have to worry about tangles. This would actually probably be a good thing to brush like a little girl's hair with because you know, they don't like when tangles go through their hair, you know. So I love this. You guys should pick this up. I think it was like five bucks at Target. The next thing that I have is kind of strange, but it is a toothbrush. This is by Colgate and it's the Optic White Toothbrush Plus Whitening Pen. I had heard about this, I think Nikki Philippi here on YouTube used it and then I was very intrigued by it. I drink a lot of coffee, I know I say that a lot, but it's, it's true. And so I try to take good care of my teeth and wear my retainers at night. I don't always do that. In fact, more often than not, I don't, but I try to floss and all that good stuff. But you know, you just wanna make sure that you try to keep them white and especially when you drink as much coffee as I do. I felt like they were starting to get yellow again from just whitening them a few months ago. So first of all, this brush, in the bristles, there are little like rubber things that are designed to kind of like really deep clean and kind of rub off stains from your teeth. And then morning and night, you brush your teeth and then you whip out the pen, you do two clicks and it comes out with this like whitening gel and there's kind of this rubbery tip and then you just put it right on your teeth and it clings right to your teeth. It doesn't hurt the way bleach can like hurt. I, I mean, I have pretty sensitive teeth and it didn't bug me anyway. And then you just leave it. You don't have to rinse it. You don't have to do anything. I will say that it's not the most pleasant thing in the world to leave this like gel on your teeth, especially in the morning at night. It was okay because then you just like go to bed right after. But 
it goes away. It kind of just like soaks into your teeth, soaks in. I mean, obviously it's safe for you to swallow it. And I did notice that, I don't know if you guys can tell, I, I, I don't think it made a huge difference, but it's a good way to kind of keep things white in between. I don't know if, if you ever do like big whitenings. This is a good way to kind of maintain and remove basic stains so you guys should check this out I think it was like $13 I got mine at Target I will link everything below as per usual in summary the gel was a little awkward like a little weird to have this like gel in your mouth but once you get over it you kind of just like swallow and, and put your chapstick on and then you're good to go so I really liked this that's gonna do it for my product favorite so now I have several like media or other favorites let's start with oh okay an app that I've been absolutely obsessed with is audible audible i've talked about it before it's an audiobook app and it's through amazon i'm an incredibly distracted human being i love reading and i love like the idea of reading but the reality is it takes me a very long time to get through a book unfortunately because by the time i sit down and i open the book as much as i like it i'm so distracted i'm so busy and it just bothers me so audiobooks are something that i've been really into i listened to two audiobooks this month and they were both fairly long one of them was like nine and a half hours and i listened to it in like four days and one of them was like seven hours and i listened to it in like a week or so one thing that i love about listening to audiobooks is that i listened to nine hours worth of a book and it never felt like i sat down and listened to nine hours of a book i didn't that was all just listen to in like dead space of like me in the shower, me getting ready in the morning, me driving to work, like all of this empty space, I was able to kill two birds with one stone and like also listen to a book. So anyway, let me tell you the two books that I listened to this month. I recommend both of them. The first one was Modern Romance by Aziz Ansari. If you know who Aziz Ansari is, you know that he's hilarious. I love when the author narrates their own book, especially when it's like not a fiction book like these ones are. So he, he narrates it. It's hilarious. It basically talks about romance in today's day and age and how it has changed and evolved from like the 40s, the 50s and, and all of that. He wrote it with another guy and they actually did a lot of extensive research so i enjoy it because it's actually really informational and factual they do all these big um like focus groups and studies and yes aziz is hilarious but he wasn't trying to be this like sarcastic funny guy throughout the whole thing he actually is telling you facts and they talk a lot about like um dating apps and how love and relationships are now compared to how they were in a lot of our parents generation and all these different factors and I just found myself like really learning things as well as them laughing while he would just the way he would phrase certain things some of the things that I liked let's see if I can remember exactly how he phrased it he talked about shoot what was it passionate love versus companionate love I think those were the two words that he used but the reality is that any love story that begins as being this like intense, passionate love, that has a shelf life and it not in a negative way, but just that that initial honeymoon phase and blah, 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 kind of wears away and that over time you're gonna get into this, the companionate love. But he talks about the fact that that's when some people stray from their relationships and cheat and how it's kind of sad because really like the companionate love is the kind where you're a little more comfortable around each other and you're kind of just two companions in this life going through it together. He talks about how in this day and age compared to maybe back in the 40s and 50s, we have so many more choices and that people with a lot of choice actually tend to be a little less happy and a little bit more confused. And I definitely relate to that. Like I definitely agree. You walk down the ketchup aisle and there are 13 different kinds of ketchup and quite frankly, it's like you're set up for failure because you're like, well, which one's the best? I don't know. So he talks about that a lot and I thought it was interesting because at the same time, everybody talks about you don't want to settle in a relationship. You don't want to just find someone who's like just all right. You want to get like the over the moon, over the stars. I'm trying to quote it takes two, but I don't know the quote. Anyway, I can't think of that quote right now. Maybe I'll put it on the screen, but you want to get that like amazing over the top love. But because of that, it makes us like very picky and very like, eh, no, no, no. And then they talked about how like somebody on Tinder or Bumble or any of the dating apps, you know, you are having all these connections with these people. You could get like a swipe right for anybody who doesn't know what that means. You could get told, yes, okay, cool, you're cute by like 50 people and still not really like any of them. And it's funny because back in like 
the 80s or the 70s or whatever, how long would it take you to get hit on by 50 people? Do you know what I mean? Like just the difference of how fast everything goes nowadays, but at the same time, there were so many choices. I don't know, it was really interesting and um, I really liked it, so I would definitely recommend it if you're a fan of Aziz Ansari and if you're interested just in the whole concept of like modern love and how it's different. The other book that I read, read, and I absolutely loved and I highly recommend is It's Not Okay by Andy Dorfman. She was The Bachelorette um, a few seasons ago. Her book, oh my gosh, if you like The Bachelor and like the whole Bachelor franchise, you need to listen to it. Additionally, if you like, I don't know, I would say anybody who has gone through a breakup in like the last year, especially females, I mean, I, I guess mostly females, if you've gone through a breakup within the last year, and any time sooner than that. You need to stop what you're doing and listen to this book now. She is so transparent. She tells all, it's narrated by her. I mean, there's a lot of cursing. There's a lot of like, oh my gosh, jaw dropping moments. She does not hold back. She tells everything and it really makes you reflect a lot. It made me reflect a lot. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I found myself wanting to listen to it like every second that I possibly could. A few things that were kind of like key points that I took from the book was this part. She talked about um, when you are so sad and you're heartbroken, you should ask yourself, well, maybe it wasn't really love after all. Like maybe I know it felt like it, but maybe that wasn't really real love. Or on the alternative side, maybe it was only love. And I've talked about this before on my channel in my love video, I will link it below perhaps, but that love is not enough to make any relationship last. You need more than love. And I'm gonna read a quote from the book. I don't think it's verbatim, but this was a part that very much so resonated with me. So when you say that it was only love, she says, logic tells us that if two people really love each other, it should work out. But the reality is that the Beatles had it all wrong. Love is not all you need. It's a main ingredient like flour in a cake but you need other things like sugar, baking powder, eggs, etc. I thought that was a really interesting point to make because it puts into words the really great analogy that you can have like a real great love, but without some other components, it's not always gonna last long term. And so if anything, I think that can help you like process certain breakups, you know? So I thought that was an interesting point. Also, she talked about, there was a really funny part where she's talking about how your mind kind of like protects you in a sense where you have a hard time remembering the bad and you only remember the good, right? So if you're going through this breakup and you're crying and you're devastated and you're just thinking of all these good times, and she's like, why does your brain do that? Like maybe if love is blind, heartbreak is also blind? Because the reality is you're not together for a reason. There were many bad, things and bad moments and you know that got you here and so don't forget those parts she talks about like let me tell you something if it was really that great you wouldn't be sitting here eating chicken fried rice and drinking like your fourth glass of wine so i just thought that was funny kind of like ah well you got a point you know when you're feeling like oh i miss i miss the relationship i miss it's like well wait do you miss the fights do you miss like all those hard things and i don't know i just thought it was really interesting if nothing else she was a great storyteller and like i said if you love the bachelor franchise and if you've gone through a breakup go download that book now okay i just have two tv favorites and then two music favorites and then we are done here my first tv favorite is no surprise it's bachelor in paradise i didn't watch it last season and i'm kicking myself for it because i've watched like every bachelor season since ashley I forget her last name, she's with JP. Ever since then, I've watched every season. I watched the first season of Bachelor in Paradise, but I didn't watch last season. Anyway, that's all irrelevant mumbo jumbo because I'm watching it now and it's great. It's just good TV. Don't deny it. You know you watch The Bachelor and The Bachelorette and you know it's addicting, whether or not it's stupid or all of the above. It's so fascinating. I just love it. And Josh, okay, going back to Andy Dorfman's book, Josh, who is her ex-fiance, is on the show, and Nick, who was the second runner-up, or like the guy after Josh, is on the show as well. And it's really interesting to watch them on the show now that I've listened to all this stuff that Andy said about them, so that is just another extra enticing factor about the show. But I love it, Bachelor in Paradise. I don't know who my favorite couple is, actually. I like Kayla and Jared, I guess. I like... I don't know, I'm just kind of along for the ride. I, I like it all. I, I don't really have favorites right now. My other favorite thing that was on TV obviously was the Olympics. I have American pride, not just American pride, but I think the Olympics are so 
cool. Like I eat it up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Just the whole history behind it all. And it makes me relive all those times when I'm like, oh my gosh, I remember like Dominique Dawes and like the gymnasts from, cause gymnastics is obviously my favorite event. And I remember watching all of that like in the 90s. And then I remember, you know, Sean Johnson and Nastia Lukin. And then like four years ago when it was like the Fab Five or whatever their nickname was. And I was so obsessed with Ali Raisman and Simone Biles. Like I have the biggest girl crush on both of them. I think they're like friendship goals, BFF goals. I think they're adorable. I loved when they won first and second. Like it was just so, so cute. I love the Olympics. Go USA. And last thing before I melt here because I'm sitting in front of a blinding hot light and there's no air going anywhere so that the noise doesn't carry over. I'm gonna go ahead and do my two music favorites of the month. These are just two of the songs that I have not been able to stop listening to this month. The first one is Closer by the Chainsmokers featuring Halsey. Hey, I was doing just fine before I met you. I drank too much and that's an issue, but I'm okay. It's just such a fun beat, and if you've listened to it, my favorite part about the whole song is that they give Tucson a big shout out. That's where I went to school, Bear Down, University of Arizona. They talk about that Blink-182 song that we beat to death in Tucson, and I was like, yes, because I love Blink-182, love Tucson. And then the chorus is just awesome. Pull me closer in the backseat of your rover that I know you can't afford. Best line I've heard in a while. And the last favorite that I have for you guys is a song by Shawn Mendes, who is so adorable, by the way, is Treat You Better. It's just so good. That's all I really have to say. You guys need to listen to these songs. Sean Mendez, go check it out. That's all I have for you guys. I'm sorry if this was long. I tried to keep it condensed, but yeah, the books I couldn't help but talk a lot about, and I really think you should go listen to them. They're great. Download Audible. You get your first book for free. 30 month, 30 month, 30 day trial, which includes one free audiobook that you get to keep even if the um, even if you don't continue the subscription. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well and happy September, guys. Oh my gosh. I've said it before, but it's basically Christmas. Okay, love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.